the various contrivances by which British and foreign orchids are fertilized by insects. By somebody you've heard of, Darwin. Yeah, you, 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 you know who that is. We have this rather unusual little book about orchids here. And it's, uh, it's a lovely thing. It's a first edition. It has a letter from Darwin and they bound in with it. We'll talk about that in, in just a moment. Gar, tell me, why was Darwin interested in orchids after having worked on, you know, the origin of species, a much bigger theoretical topic? And why is he getting into, you know, down in the weeds, literally? Darwin was really a naturalist at heart. Uh, he loved to get right down to the nitty-gritty of the way organisms are put together, the way in which uh, their parts fit together, the way in which different groups within the species or within the genera are related to each other, could have evolved from each other. So, in a sense, the Orchid book uh, was one of the first cases after the publication of Origin where he would use a very specific study to demonstrate the power of natural selection and how that explanation could, in fact, account for uh, what was the very unusual and well-known modifications of orchids for the, the flower structure and their color and so on. One of the interesting things that, that fed into that, of course, was that uh, collecting and growing orchids was a very popular sort of middle-class activity in Victorian Britain. So many, many you know, moderately wealthy to middle-class people had orchid windows in their houses. And one of the reasons that Darwin particularly focused on orchids was partly there was just a lot known about them. There were a lot sure. available that grew both in nature in Britain and they were cultivated and sold as ornamental plants. Uh, they were all over the tropics, so you had worldwide distribution of them. So they were a very good example of a group that you could explain as having evolved from common ancestors over very different environmental uh, regimes. So that was one in interest. A second interest was that it uh, re revealed to Darwin the co-evolution of insects and flowers. Oh, and right. that was something that was uh, had been noted by a German naturalist in the late 18th century named uh, Christian uh, Sprengel. Uh, and he wrote the whole little book about the way in which insects fertilize plants. But that had largely been ignored by naturalists. The predominant explanation for why plants had these beautiful colors and structures was the, the, the theory of natural theology. Well, that yeah, is well, a, well, God wanted them that God way. God wanted them that way. They had made uh, these perfect contrivances or the result of the, the beneficence of the creator. Uh, sure. There was one aspect of that that claimed really they were, writ they were made for the beautification of man. Right, and right. They were they were supposed to be uplifting for us. Uplifting for way. us. They were yeah. created for us. Yeah. And what Darwin was trying to do was show that uh, that was you know a totally useless kind of explanation. That they were uh, developed out of this means of a necessity for pollination, uh, by, and cross pollination by insects. And we can get to that yeah. maybe a little bit later. That may explain something about the letter that we have yeah. here, because bound into this volume is a uh, an autograph letter by. Charles Darwin, uh, dated in 1862 to Josiah Westwood. And he says, um, uh, my dear sir, I beg pardon for troubling you, being very British, um, <laughs> but I should much like to see the bee which you said I uh, might examine. And then he gives, he says another sentence here that I have difficulty deciphering. His, his handwriting was, is not entirely clear, but then he gives, he says, it could come by the post and, and here's um, his address. Here, here's my address, please, mm -hmm. if you would be so kind. And so he clearly wants to get hold of a bee. Why did Darwin want to get hold of a bee, and why is that relevant uh, to this? Well, that's a great question, because in fact, the, uh, the, what excited his interest in orchids was the fact that they were largely insect pollinated, as opposed to wind pollinated or other mechanisms that other groups of plants had. So the f feature of that that was particularly interesting was that the insect that pollinated the plant had to be able to get into the plant, get into the area where the pollen was located. You have an illustration the, there that yeah. kind of shows the problem, uh, how, and, how and deep some, the flower is. Some orchid flowers are extremely deep. Yeah. Uh, and for the 
the, the insect to get into it or to in some way be invited into the plant uh, had to be a structural relationship between the two. Right. And for Darwin, that was a particularly good illustration of the principle of natural selection in an ecological context. That is, it was not just one organism evolving, mm -hmm. but it was two organisms evolving together. Uh, he found there was one orchid that had something like a 12-inch flower where the nectar was at the very bottom of the flower. And he predicted there must be a moth or some insect that would have a long enough proboscis, which is mm -hmm. their, uh, like their tongue, mm -hmm. uh, that could reach into the depth of that flower. So uh -huh. the, 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 the feature of insect orchid coevolution was something that was an important illustration of Darwin's uh, theory of natural selection. It also fit into another aspect of his theory, which is uh, the question that was very prominent at this time was, you know, do plants cross-fertilize or do they fertilize themselves? Because it was quite clear that many flowers have both male and female uh, you know, generating parts. And actually, and that's one of the things he says in the very conclusion that, that, that we read a moment ago, where he says, well, doesn't it seem likely? Right. That, uh, and his point is that, uh, in fact, what insect pollination does is allow for and promote a lot more cross-fertilization. Huh. And for him, cross-fertilization meant increased variation within the population that therefore would provide raw material for natural selection. The illustrations are, we, we don't think, are by Darwin. Most of them were not by Darwin. Right. He did do some drawing, but he enlisted his son, so mm -hmm. a couple of his sons, to do some of the drawings, but most of the drawings were taken from technical monographs by you know, mm -hmm. other specialists. Well, so I have, I, I have a few here that um, I have one. This is, this is sort of typical. Um, it's a, a drawing of this thing called a fly orchis, um, uh, with uh, in, including its pollen structure because that was the all important thing all important, presumably right, yeah. for for him um, with all the parts labeled mm -hmm. um, and then we we also get this uh, this great fold out here and maybe you could tell us what what is going on in this fold out. The fold-out shows, I think, dissected parts of the orchid plant. If, uh, mm -hmm. I believe this one at the bottom looks like sort of the, uh, the whole flower. Mm -hmm. And then the structure right here is the uh, pollen uh, capsule. Uh, and many of these pollen capsules are quite unique in their structure in that they uh, have the pollen is sticky and mm -hmm. it sh can be shot out at a distance that can go as far as a foot by a hmm. mechanism that shoots it out so it hits the insect as the insect is crawling in and around and through the plant. Um, so that the insect doesn't necessarily even have to get doesn't, all the doesn't way have in to, to, touch get, it. to get to the nectar to, to get hit by a good blast of pollen. And uh -huh. then these other structures show, uh, these look like other, uh, a group of the pollen, a lot of the pollen capsules are in little groups. Why do people now think that this book is of any significance? <laughs> uh, I think for the same reason that they think the book on insectivorous plants is significant, his book on the uh, climbing plants, he has a whole book on earthworms. Um, they're, they're all significant because I think they indicate the uh, Darwin's conception that the devil is in the details. Darwin once wrote in his notebooks, he said, I have, he said, I collect facts only for their relevance for or against a theory. So these large sort of comp compilations of factual, detailed observation, dissecting out flowers, dissecting barnacles, um, he discovered some very interesting natural history uh, observations by these, these close, careful right. studies. So I think people recognize these uh, because they really are the works of a, of a very acute observer, uh, someone who could get right down into the nitty-gritty, the, the weediness yes. of the field, Absolutely. and also think in rather global cosmic terms about large-scale processes. Well, thank you very much okay. for, uh, for all this help. Um, and I would like to remind um, those people who have watched these videos that all of these treasures are here in special collections. You can come and look at them and many thousands of other things um, on your next visit to Olin Library. It's all here 
for you.